The Overwatch World Cup has finally arrived with the preliminaries taking place over about 11 hours of action last night. It's fair to say that after staying up to watch it all, I'm feeling a little groggy, but today I want to give a quick recap of what happened, giving my thoughts on the 5 teams that ended up advancing, before then previewing the group stage that begins in just a couple of hours time, and I believe just past 7pm GMT UK time and midday Pacific time. Also for those wanting to see the full VODs of these matches, I'll leave a link down in the description below that can take you to all the Twitch channels that were broadcasting yesterday. I think it'd be best if I broke everything down into the respective brackets, so I'll start with bracket A. As we can see, the finalised bracket had New Zealand taking on Austria in the quarterfinals, with the winner going on to face Australia in one semi-final, whilst Taiwan and Denmark clashed in the other semi-final. The first match to take place was New Zealand against Austria, and it wasn't a great watch for the Europeans in this one. Behind the excellent DPS duo of Color Hex and Signed, New Zealand were almost unstoppable, with the Austrians clearly outclassed. To their credit, they dug in and put in effort for hour, a characteristic probably led by their captain Minimi, but the match concluded convincingly 3-0 in the Kiwis' favour. Shortly after this, the first semi-final to take place was Taiwan against Denmark, and despite myself and many others favouring Denmark in this one, it was in fact Taiwan who got off to a much better start, led by their starman Baconjack as they took advantage of some sloppy Danish play to win the opening control map. From this point on though, Denmark started to get into more of a rhythm, with Shaxx and Fischer beginning to pop off at DPS, and throughout the rest of the series the Danes took command, winning three maps on the bounce to advance to the final after this 3-1 victory. All eyes now are on the derby down under, as the neighbouring nations of Australia and New Zealand started to clash. Most expected the Aussies to come out on top, but the first map told an entirely different story, as it was New Zealand who looked fantastic early on, taking map 1. The contest throughout the rest of the series was nail-biting, with momentum swinging back and forth as a great DPS battle developed between Color Hex signed and CKM I Eat You Up. The key moment came at the end of the second map on Iconward, where it came down to one final team fight to see who would win the map. In the end of it, it was Australia who just managed to clutch it out, despite it initially looking like it was going in the favour of New Zealand. It eventually came down to a Game 5 decider, in which the experience of the Australians finally told, as they edged themselves over the line. Despite this defeat though, all credit must go to New Zealand, who were fantastic, with the rest of the team behind their star-studded DPS line playing really well themselves, and they can be incredibly proud of taking a team seeded almost 20 places above them to the brink. This unconvincing Australian performance in the semi-final though was very telling heading into the final, as a warmed up Denmark just looked more refined and clinical at every position, that allowed them to keep firm control of the series, eventually winning it 3-0, to take bracket A and advance to the group stage. Bracket B meanwhile would see Ireland battle Iceland in the quarters, with the winner taking on the UK in the semis, whilst Norway fought Spain in the other semi. Now looking at the results, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this bracket wasn't very entertaining, with every scoreline finishing 3-0. You'd be right for saying that in the Norway vs Spain match, as that was incredibly one sided in the favour of the Norwegians. However, we now come to the Ireland game, who sadly didn't get their chance to take on South Korea, as they were knocked out here by the Euro Cup winners Iceland. That said, don't let the scoreline fool you. Yes, the final map was very convincing, with Iceland having got to grips with Ireland's unique style, but the first two maps could have and perhaps should have gone very differently. Map 1 of the Sun was about as close for control map as possible, with the Irish initially looking to have won it right at the death, with Buckle and Flexgy popping off at DPS, with the rest of the side contributing massively as well. Had Hathikul not then gone insane with a crazy double kill onto Pharmacy with his McCree, there is no doubt in my mind that Ireland would have taken the opening map. Then on Hollywood, Iceland struggled for over 3 minutes to break for a stout Irish defensive hold, and heading into what seemed to be the final fight, they held a significant ultimate advantage with 5 ultimates online. This time though, it was Iceland's other star Finzi who came in clutch with a huge rock accretion stun that opened the floodgates, stopping Ireland from guaranteeing a draw but also what could have been a map win as well. They may have fallen at this early stage, but I think a huge amount of praise and credit should go to Ireland for what they've been able to achieve heading into the World Cup this year. They've won over the hearts of nearly every neutral with a fantastic attitude, amazing social media and brilliant charitable approach. They genuinely gave Iceland cause for concern, with the final 3-0 score flattering them in my opinion and at the end of the day, they still remain undefeated to South Korea. As for the remaining two matches, both involving the UK, again the 3-0 results don't tell the full story, as I thought both Iceland and then Norway put in solid performances. They just couldn't keep up with the coordinated ruthlessness of the UK, with both KSP and Kiv really finding a groove on DPS, or Smex put in a great Sigma display himself, as the UK won bracket B, therefore earning their advance through to the group stage. Now we arrive at bracket C, which in my opinion was the most competitive and entertaining bracket of play from the preliminary round. As usual though, the first rounds were somewhat definitive. Italy crushed a spirited Indian score 3-0 before Colombia got the better of the Philippines 3-1, although shout out to Billy from the Philippines squad who I thought played really well and at times was dealing with Colombia by himself. Sweden then predictably brushed aside Colombia 3-0 with ease, but fair play to the South Americans whose Arissa Ryan comps are incredibly entertaining to see in action, even if they produce mixed results. However, it was the other semi-final and final that really cemented how good the competition of this group was. 
First came a titanic clash between Italy and Japan, which I won't be able to give full justice to in this video, and if there's one VOD you should go back and watch, it's definitely this one. Just as they had shown in the Euro Cup, Italy wore a very well regimented outfit, who consistently made a number of great plays behind Dragonetti who was going ham on Sigma, as well as heartbeat on Doomfist. On the other side of the equation though, whilst a little more erratic with their playstyle, the highly synergised Japan squad kept nipping at the Italians heels, with Ten often the propeller for their successful engagements on the Doomfist, as he was backed up by Tayo's Reaper and an aggressive Moira display from Haku. The maps traded back and forth, but Italy headed into Paris with a 2-1 lead. Both teams finished the map first time around, but Japan were then full held on their second attack, leaving Italy with plenty of time to just capture one tick and claim victory. Then came a heroic defensive stand from the Japanese players, but at times came down to just one or two players on either side, but in the end they were just able to scrape out a draw and keep their hopes alive. Then they edged out the following control map to take this awesome series to its sixth map, again on control but would be its decider. Of course it was yet again incredibly close, but Dragon Eddy just got his graphitic flux just before the sound barrier came online for Japan, allowing Italy to win the final team fight and claim victory 3-2. In a match that despite their elimination, Japan should be incredibly proud of after a brilliant effort and showing. The fun wasn't to stop here though, as Italy now faced off against Sweden for the right to advance to the group stage. Despite on paper being the favourites, Sweden started off really slowly as Italy repeatedly punished poor healing and support alt usage from Epps and Gustav to take the first control map, and then follow that up with a draw on the next map as well. This support problem plagued Sweden for the opening half of the series, as despite some really nice plays from Erki, Lothish and Elivo, too often this deficiency would let them down in team fights against constant pressure from Heartbeat and Dragon Eddy. Both teams completed the third map on Dorado, but Italy were clearly in their driving seat and looked favourites to go 2 up. Then came the turning point, a fire alarm, heard across all the streams that were live at the time. The cast has bugged out, but as it was just a drill, the players kept playing, and I don't know what it was, but it just seemed to flick a switch in the Swedish players that finally saw them start to play to their expected level. Epps and Gustav especially improved significantly with some clutch ultimates from the pair, turning things around for Sweden, allowing them to level up the series at 1-1. From here, the control of the series began to be wrestled further and further away from the Italians, with Rat playing much better on the Reaper than Snillo, who had been subbed out after the opening two maps. The contest remained close, but it was Sweden who were now in control, and went on to win the following two maps to consequently win the match 3-1, and must bracket C, claiming them a spot in the group stage. Despite being so close though, I have to give huge props to Italy, who a lot of people underestimated as I had previously. I think considering their skill level and previous experience, they were one of the clear winners from the preliminaries, after showing up and challenging two very good teams back to back, taking the victory over Japan, and perhaps even beating Sweden had things not turned around. Bracket D on the other hand saw a lot less competition and was much more definitive in its outcome. Just like in bracket B, every single match finished 3-0, and if I'm being honest, most of these matches were incredibly one-sided. Mexico and Hong Kong made quick work of their quarterfinal opposition in Latvia and Paraguay respectively, before then convincingly being defeated by Russia and Germany in the semis. Although in fairness, they both put up decent fights with some nice plays from the likes of Sam for the Mexicans and Mue and Mango Jai on the side of Hong Kong. They set up a final of Russia against Germany, where I think one storyline told it all. Shadowburn has a knack of becoming a god when playing for his country, and it was his Doomfist play that often defined their engagements and aggression. When he died, often the rest of the Russians would collapse around him, but as we saw in the final, he didn't die too often. Instead, with so much focus placed onto him without him falling, it allowed Enlayer to go crazy on the Reaper, whilst Tonic and Shao enjoyed a comfortable time on the tank line, as Russia rather convincingly took the series 3-0, and therefore bracket D with it, taking a spot in the group stage. Though they were unable to get past the Russian Federation, I think Germany could take heart with their performance, as it highlights that as a nation they're definitely improving year on year, and I thought Moose's Sigma once again impressed, hopefully proving to others that he's certainly more than a hog one trick. This finally brings us on to bracket E, which was a lot more competitive than perhaps the scores will show them to have been afterwards. On the top side though, Singapore made easy work for South Africans, before coming unstuck against an interesting looking finish side that was led at DPS by Shaz and RCK. Although I must give a tip of the hat to Bubble Kitty, whose name Brennan Sideshow particularly enjoyed as he put in a good display, and also to John Galt, the head coach, who's clearly coached this team incredibly well. From a coordination standpoint, they look very clean and impressive despite their clear lack of experience. On the other side of the bracket though, I want to pay close attention to Saudi Arabia, who were incredibly impressive. In a tough contest against Portugal, despite going down a map early, they came back strongly to claim the win, for when putting the Netherlands heavily through their paces, where to be honest, they could have perhaps done much better than their eventual 3-1 defeat had they been more ruthless when they had ultimate advantages, as well as the Dutch side not coming in clutch every time in overtime. Particular credit must go to Light, Kassar and KSA on the Saudi side though, where Fort demonstrated what good players they are, and they don't normally get this international land opportunity as they too often stuck on bad ping in European servers. But this hopefully proved that their Eurocup performance was not a fluke, where they showed they are arguably on a similar level to a team like Denmark. 
This brings us on to the final vote between Finland and the Netherlands. This would be a very tense affair, but it quickly became defined and directed by one major advantage that the Dutch held, and that was their DPS department. Overall, I thought the tanks and supports on both sides played each other really closely, even if in the end, LH Cloudy was perhaps a little too aggressive with his Arissa, but it became abundantly clear throughout the contest, and especially in crucial teamfights, that Vazility, A10 and Jonah had the edge over the makeshift Finland DPS options of Shaz, RCK and Ricky. Particularly in the contest between Vazility and RCK on Doomfist, it was clear that the experience Edge Vazility held was repeatedly punishing RCK, who increasingly became the first to fall in teamfights, always giving the Netherlands the edge, who eventually wrapped up the series 3-0, to finally get over the hump of the past couple of years, winning bracket E and thereby finally seeing them confirm a spot on the BlizzCon stage by making groups. All in all, even if the streams were a little scuffed, I think that the preliminaries as a whole had their own little atmosphere and character that I really liked, although it's something that clearly needs a little more thought and planning put into next year. What is clear though, in my opinion, is that we have the five best teams outside of a top five entering the group stage, which is great to see, even if the groups themselves have seen some odd seeding. So Group A now holds South Korea, France, USA, UK and Sweden, whilst Group B contains China, Canada, Denmark, Russia and the Netherlands. On paper they aren't necessarily that balanced, but it should make for an exciting group of death in Group A, whilst Group B should also be very entertaining, as plenty is up for grabs. In Group A though, I can't see South Korea or the USA not making it out, and I'm going to have to have faith it will be the UK joining them, probably in that order. As for B though, whilst my prediction may seem simple, I would not be surprised for one second if perhaps Canada or China underperform and even get knocked out if they're complacent, although I'm currently thinking it will be Canada, China and the Netherlands advancing. But on that note, I think I'll end this video here, and I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope to be back tomorrow with a recap of the group stages, so if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, then please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.